Can I have a swallow of that? Huh? You can hear it. Oh, I just need one. I don't have one. Where's the fuzzy? What? Where's the fuzzy? We're right behind you. Where's your butt? My brain case. Yeah, but that's so simple. They're both on the same, are they both still on the same? So we're about ready to get ready for worship. Uh, glad everybody's here and hope that uh, you, we have a great afternoon or morning, whatever time it is. Um, just a, a couple announcements. Uh, Amy has some for Vacation Bible School that she's going to share. Also for prayer, um, I understand Daisy uh, Bowersox is in the hospital. Uh, so keep you keep her in your prayers, and also Kim Lawrence is not feeling well. So keep them both in your prayers right now. Actually, and the baby too. So her and her little kids. Yep. So keep them in your prayers. Any other prayer concerns? Go ahead, Buck. Sixty-three years ago, my wife and I were married this day. All right. All right. An anniversary. Sixty-three years. Congratulations. You want to do renewal of vows? We can do it. She says that every day has been a new adventure. <laughs> Good. Uh, yeah, there's some seats in, inside here if you guys want to come in. The shade. Anything else before Amy gets up here? All right, Amy. And there's lots in the bulletin. If you didn't get a yellow bulletin with the songs, they're at the back there. But, uh, check out the announcements that are in there, and I'll hand it over to Amy. So just a slight change to the VBS um, information that was emailed, and it will be in the bulletin next week. Um, apparently there's a wedding the weekend right before Bible school. So unless the bride wants a frozen castle-themed wedding with a dragon mascot, I know, right? Wouldn't everyone want that? So unless she wants that, we're going to have to postpone the decorating. So my plan is that I and any of my family members who I can guilt into helping me are going to do the basement ahead of time. And then that Sunday, right before Bible school, anyone who can stay, um, we'll just do the main floor. I know it's Father's Day. I can't help that. But if you want to stay, I will buy you pizza if you can stay. And it's just hanging banners, taping things up. It's not major. Um, the only, quote, major thing is we do need some help pulling down the puppet stage pieces from upstairs and putting those together, but hopefully it will go quickly. Thank you. Thanks, Sammy. Anything else? All right. We'll turn it over to Vanessa. Okay, everybody pray this doesn't fall <laughs> and that I don't fall back there. Anybody want to bet how many bugs I'm going to eat? I already ate one. <laughs> yeah. 
sing along with me. This is the day the Lord has made. Okay. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day. story to start our service off today. Uh, it's a story about a captain on a ship a long time ago, and the ship had hit rough seas and a bad storm, and they were about to go down. And the captain announced to every, uh, out to everybody, does anybody know how to pray? Yeah, I and one guy raises says, yeah, yeah, captain, I know how to pray. He says, good, you pray, we're going to put our life jackets on because we're one short. <laughs> A lot of times when we think about prayer, we think about it almost in that context, that prayer is kind of the last end resort. It's the, you know, something that you do, but there's other things that are more important, like getting a life jacket or doing something else. And, and so today we're going to talk about what Jesus wants us to do when we pray and the attitude that we should have and how important it is for us as we worship and as we follow Jesus Christ. So keep that in mind as we sing our next one, Open My Eyes of My Heart. Okay. Sing holy, holy, holy. 
before you now and we thank you for this worship time, this special time in which we are out here for a picnic and celebrating with one another. And Lord, in a, in a sense, we thank you that uh, how special this time is because for many months, almost a year now, that uh, we haven't been able to do this together. And we thank you for this fellowship and this time we can share. We ask that you continue to bless us in our song and in our prayer and our meditation today that uh, ultimately we will glorify you and serve you throughout the coming week. We pray all this in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Would the children come up at this time? <laughs> yeah, you can just stand right around in here in the sunlight. Yeah, there you go. I'm glad to see everybody. So, you know what's coming up in a couple weeks? It's summer now. <laughs> now, Vacation Bible School. As Miss Amy said, she said it's coming up in a couple weeks, so keep that in mind. But I want us to talk about something. So I want you to fold your hands like you're praying, okay? Oh. All right. Now, 
Sometimes we have a hard time remembering what to pray for, and so there's this little trick that I found that's really kind of neat. If you go with your fingers, you can remember what to pray for, like your thumbs. Your thumbs are very important to you, and so you need to, you know, it's closest to you, right? It's right next to your body, so you need to think about praying for those closest to you. Who's closest to you in your life? Who's important to you in your life? Sisters, good, and parents, who else? Friends. Oh, good. Friends, yes. You know, those people, you, you know, stop. Your first thing you do is you give thanks and pray to God for your friends and family and those people that are important to you. The next finger is your index finger, and you point with that a lot. It leads you. You say, okay, I'm going to go that way. And so that finger is a good finger about direction. So you need to pray for people that help you, give you directions. Like, uh, your, again, your parents, teachers, Sunday school teachers, you know, pastors, leaders in the church. You know, good people that help you out in your life. So pray for those who are helping to lead you. Now, your middle finger there is the highest and longest finger. And so it reminds us of some of the important people in our lives. Uh, again, family, but also for people who are around that take care of things that we don't think about, like, you know, firemen, police officers, you know, our elected officials, our president and representatives, all those people to pray for them and pray for, you know, the world governments and things like that, that, you know, control a lot of things that we are experiencing. Now, did you know that the, the ring finger is your weakest finger? If you talk to somebody who plays the piano right there, Susie? <laughs> your ring finger is your weakest finger so that's a good finger to remember those who are sick those who are homeless those who go hungry those who need help to, to remember those people and your little finger you know is a, a little finger it's to remind you that the bible says you know not to think too much of ourselves but also know that god loves us so the, the little finger is a great finger to remember to pray for yourself, for God's help and guidance. All right? So, thumb. Who are you praying for in your thumb? Yep, people closest to you. So, who are you praying for for your index finger? Yep. Who are you praying for with your biggest, longest finger, or middle finger? Yep, leaders. All right. The weakest finger, who are you praying for? And the little finger... Yeah, yourselves. Great. All right. Hold on. Get your candy kisses here. Hopefully they're not too melted. They'll be a little bit soft. We'll have a quick prayer before you go. Let's pray. God, we thank you again for your amazing love in our lives and a way that you remind us through your Holy Spirit to pray to pray for our friends and family, for leaders, even for ourselves. Continually help us to remember that throughout uh, our days, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you very much. You can go back to your seats. So at uh, this time, too, I want to recognize our seniors, and I know Grace is here. If you would come down. I don't. Is Emma here? I don't know if I see. Oh, there she is. Okay. If you guys would come down. And as you see in the bulletin, we also have another one, Parker, who graduated uh, from Ross Park. Where, where, Ross Park. Montour. What? Montour. Montour, yeah. So, and you see what he's doing there. But uh, since we have Emma and Grace here, we thought we embarrassed them. <laughs> so here's a couple questions. This has been your week of graduation. What was uh, your favorite part about graduation? Uh, just to see all my friends one last time before we all graduated. Big time, yep. Uh, what was your least favorite thing? Um, they postponed graduation because it was raining, so they made us wait another day. So. <laughs> yeah, All right. So what are you planning to do? I'm attending the University of Kentucky, majoring in environmental science. Very nice. Oh, so I've got. A, I like to give uh, students books uh, to read, not just because I know I know you have Bibles and you'll be taking them to your college, <laughs> but uh, but there are some books that I think uh, would be interesting and books that you know, might help you. And so, Emma, here's a book. It's What If Jesus Was Serious? It's about Matthew chapter 5. 
and Grace will give you yours, and I'll ask you some questions a little bit. But I wanted to talk about the book because you see that there's a sticker on the cover here. And it says, warning, do not open this book until after your first semester. <laughs> because I realize your first semester is going to be crazy. You're going to go through all sorts of transitions, changes, ups and downs, some of your best times and worst times. And so really that book I think will be helpful after you go through all that and just take a moment and stop and read it. So it will not explode, but I do say that. <laughs> so Grace, what was uh, your favorite time, stuff for the week? I'm um, probably getting to see my friends again because I've been doing school from home, so I haven't been able to see a lot of people recently. So it was fun to see them at practices and graduation. And your least favorite? Probably during the practices and just kind of knowing that I'm probably not going to see a lot of them again. And you are going? I'm going to Robert Morris University, and I'm majoring in biology. Well, let's have a time of prayer. God, we come before you, and we thank you for Emma and Grace, for their years of school, for their connection with us as a church, and uh, certainly the blessing that they have been to us as they have served in many different ways. Continue to be with them in these days as they prepare for college, as they prepare for this new transition in life, certainly bless them with your spirit. Give them strength and wisdom for each day. And we also lift up uh, their family and their parents as they go through this time. Bless them with this transition as well. We give you thanks for all this in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you very much. You may be seated. So this is when we'll start up with the sermon, and uh, just to, to give you kind of a heads up, uh, if you saw the sermon teaser, you know that today you are going to write the sermon, all right? You're in charge of the sermon, so just kind of keep that in mind, and I'll give you the instructions of uh, how to do that, but uh, I think this will be a fun time, but also a meaningful time. So you see, our scripture is taken from Luke chapter 5, verses 4 through 13. That Jesus said to them, suppose you have a friend, and you go to them at midnight and say, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine has journeyed to come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, don't bother me, the door is already locked, my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you that even though he will not get up, give and give you the bread because of friendship, but yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you parents, if your child asks for a fish, would give him a snake instead? If he asks for an egg, would give him a scorpion? If then you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So, yes, you're going to write your own sermon. So to give you a quick instructions here, for those of you in the back, you'll have to get up a little bit. But at each table, there is a cup with some pencils, and underneath it is some paper. So if you would go ahead and grab a piece of paper and a cup, I hope I have enough. If not, well, first serve, first get. So. <laughs>
So has everybody got a pen, pencil, and the worksheet? Great. All right, so what we're going to start doing is kind of walking through that, and you'll see on the top that has three categories, me, which is your own personal concerns, others, which is kind of the social and you know broader community, and then God, kind of some faith issues, all right? And then on the side it has ask, seek, and knock, or receive, excuse me, receive. And uh, as I said, we'll work through this uh, as we talk about the sermons. But And also, you do not, you're not going to share this with, I'm not going to have you get up and say what's your most intimate you know, desire for your life you know, in front of everybody here. <laughs> this, is for, this is just for you and for God. And this is just uh, your, kind of your thought and process of praying to God. So when Jesus talks to the, the people, this is part of uh, the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer comes first. And so he's teaching about how to pray. And particularly in those days, they had a very different kind of understanding about prayer. Prayer was not something like what we do, you know, talk and pr talk to God and stuff like that. Prayer was something much more formal. But Jesus, it was taking kind of this sense of outside the realm of what they understood, of asking, of seeking, and receiving. So when Jesus tells us to ask, you know, asking anybody for anything is hard. I think all of us here, we like to do things ourselves. You know, we if we don't usually ask for help, if we do ask for help, it's long down the road of us trying something over and over again. So even asking God for things kind of makes us feel uncomfortable. And I know I'm not a great person to ask for help. Um, I know uh, I was working on a, our bathroom, remodeling it, and I got a, a new faucet. And... And it was a faucet shower kit, and so you put it in, and I could not get the shower part connected. I probably spent hours and, you know, a lot, of, a lot of grumbling about why this thing would not fit. And I wrestled with it. I did it over and over again. And finally, after a couple of hours, I got frustrated, went back to the plumbing store, you know, and kind of in my arrogance, I was like, this thing's broken. It doesn't work right. I don't understand it. I put it on, and it's not working right. And the guy says, well, here. It goes on like this. <laughs> so if I had asked for help originally, I wouldn't have been so frustrated. But asking for help can be very hard for us. And when we ask God for help, it even makes us feel sometimes even more uneasy. I lost my place here, sorry. But God reminds us that we, he's open for us helping him. And so what I want you to do now is in that category, what would you and what do you want to ask God for? For yourselves, ask God for others, and then finally, what, kind, what would you ask God for your faith? So spend a, a couple minutes thinking and doing, writing that down. And just heads up, it usually takes me about five, six, seven hours to write a sermon, so we got some time here, so. <laughs> and for those that yeah, are streaming, if you can see what Don is doing and maybe get a scratch of paper and write that down, that would be great for you at home. So Todd's going to share with us all the things he's done. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, keep that in mind if you haven't finished. Uh, finish that up, but that's uh, first we have to ask. And I think that's a very important step that um, God, for some reason, though, he knows what we need. He still wants us to talk to him and ask him for the things that we need. But I find it interesting when Jesus says, then we seek. And when we seek, we receive. Now, seek is an active word. It's not a word that, you know, means that we just sit back and wait for it to pop out of heaven for us. It's a word that means that we take activity. We look for the answer. We seek the answer to this prayer uh, God, and see what God's doing. 
in essence, we're looking to see, in essence, what we're doing is we're trying to be open to what God's doing. So think about that. In relationship to what you want, how are you going to seek that? You know, for me, uh, a helpful approach to this and thinking about it is there's a thing called the Ignatius Way or the Ignatius Exercise. And that, that was a, an old monk from the uh, mid, Middle Ages, excuse me, Middle Ages. And Ignatius had this way that when you were making a decision, one of the things you did is you listed the pros and cons. And I think a lot of us have done that. But you list the pros and cons, and you don't add them up and say, okay, the pros have 20 and the cons have 5, so I'm going to do it. But you list the pros and cons, and then you just sit with it. You pray with those cons. You ask, you open to, you're open to what God might do. And so you, you look that over. And then another step in Ignatius' work is then you just decide to do something. You move forward. You say, all right, uh, I'm going to seek God's will of this by doing this. And just start doing something. And you continue to do that. And if it continues to feel right, if you continue to feel that you're working with God, then you continue to do it. But if you don't, then you stop and move on to something else. That's one way in which Ignatius calls us to seek, looking for what God is doing. Um, and I think that to me that that's really a helpful way for us to understand that. So I'll give you a few moments to write down the seek. Where, how are you going to seek this? All right, for the last part, receive. I guarantee you, God will answer your prayers. God does not let prayers go unanswered. It's just not something he does. Now, the issue for us is that God usually gives us three answers to our prayers. Yes, which we like. No, which makes us not likable. We don't, we're not crazy about that. And the worst one is wait. God, a lot of times, will tell us wait. Continue seeking, continue to look, and you will receive. And so I think we need to prepare ourselves as we think about, okay, how am I going to receive God's uh, answer to my prayer? Because Jesus, remember what Jesus said, the promise that he gives to us, that if a child asks his parents for bread, that parent would not give sna a snake and, and other things that he talked about. He said, because the Father in heaven will give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. Now notice when Jesus talks about that. Jesus does not just come out and say, remember, the Father in heaven will give you your bread, will give you your desires, your wishes. No. He says he will give you the Holy Spirit. And for me, that's a huge issue because... We receive the Holy Spirit, and then we begin to have the wisdom, the understanding, and the willingness to accept what God is doing in our lives and doing around the world. So I think to that, to me, that is significance. If we're talking about receiving, how are you going to receive God's answer based through the Holy Spirit? So write something down in those categories. <clears throat> All right, if you haven't finished that, that's fine. You can do that a little bit later. But uh, what we're going to do next um, involves you to, 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 to use your sermon, to think about your sermon, to kind of A, live it out. What we're going to do is uh, Vanessa's going to sing uh, her special song today. What was the title? Worthy. Worthy. 
And God certainly is worthy of uh, our praise, but also he is a God who wants to share with us. So she's going to sing this. And as she sings this, I want all of us uh, to line up. And please don't go down the middle here because of the wires. There's a lot of wires here. So go on the outside. Come down to the door. And as you come down, I want you to pray about one of those items on your list if you want. And just kind of reflect on, okay, how am I asking? What am I asking for? What, how am I receiving this? Is seeking it and receiving it. And then how am I going to receive this? And as Jesus says, knock and the door will be open. So I want you to come down in prayer and I want each person individually to come and knock on the door. And we'll continue singing. We'll sing, Vanessa will sing and then we'll sing the last two songs as we do this. So, you know, take your time and uh, see what you receive when you knock on the door. Yeah, I read that. Uh, I was going to say Hear the cry of the shackle from the onset of time for the chains of defeat. There's no key. See the tears of the broken, the cry of the slaves is there no one worthy to set us free
me sing it again? for the sweetness of prayer, the opportunities that we have to ask, seek, and receive your blessings in our lives each and every day. Continue to teach us. Continue to guide us. Continue to motivate us to do our part, but also to be open to the Holy Spirit's part as he leads us each and every day. For all these things, Lord, we celebrate and give thanks to you and to Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit all. We pray all of this in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. So uh, the pizza is on its way. It'll be a few more minutes. So there is some water if you would like some. And we can spend some time fellowshipping and getting ready to get some lunch. So. Oh, yeah. 
If you want to go down to the playground with the kids, you can do that too. 